Hello, I'm Mark Baer. I'm with Paul Seftel. This is Conversations and Collaborations. Um, and we're talking about the state of art uh, and what the, the conversation is really about. So welcome. Thank you. And nice to see you. So we, we, this has been ongoing, but mm. off camera, obviously. And what we've, talked, what we've come up with basically is that art is a, is a multiple conversation. There's, it, it just, it's, it's many conversations. And kind of what is at the core of it is where one as an artist wants to jump into that conversation. Mm. Uh, it's not necessarily for you and I, it's not necessarily a local conversation as it, it, it is a, um, a national and a global conversation in terms of what is art, what the art world is, mm. where we want to engage in the conversation of the greater art world. And I suppose simply is, is what's it all about and why, why are we doing it? What's it all about? Why are we doing it? Yeah. And what's, it, what's at the core of this? Mm. I think I want to start here with your recent trip through the, the Southwest because again, as, as you see in, in the studio, you have a deep involvement with the materials hmm. and the earth and it's, hmm. you're touching and you're manifesting. Hmm. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about your trip and, and kind of, you know, if you've been taking me around the, the studio, you've shown hmm. me pigments that you found and hmm. how, how it works in the thing and, and then the multi layers and what goes into making a painting. Well, you know, I think firstly, the American landscape has been a really deep inspiration for my work. I've been traveling across this changing vast landscape for so many years now returning to places and feeling the stories and the histories in the earth, not just our cultural histories or even the indigenous histories, but the geological history. Um, and the American West, I understand, is the youngest desert in the world, meaning it was most recently an ocean. Um, and so starting with that notion that the desert was once an ocean, um, is this, what's intriguing about that is, well, what lies beneath? You know, how are these, these plants, the, uh, the brush, the really uh, the desert plants? Because when you spend any time in the desert, you realize that it's not this empty, dead place. Life in the desert is vital, right? And you see um, various different brush and plants, and you, uh, you start to see the patterns of coral. And, you even find shells. Um, and recently I was in Utah and there are places there where the, the sandstone is being eroded and you get these totemic columns, they call them hoodoos. And you just realize that everything is in constant change, constantly eroding, and it's just what remains, what is left behind. So even the colored earth, like the red earth, which is everywhere across this planet, the red earth, the black stone, right? This volcanic kind of culmination of which we're a part of, right? I am just, I fall for that, right? I'm in it. Uh, I, if I could really explain it, I wouldn't need to paint it, but I gather these materials along the way, green sands and red sands and yellow sands and I was just putting them in bags because I found them fascinating and I've been working on a painting since I came back and here by the ocean and I covered the whole canvas in the ground of this red red earth it's like iron oxide red some call it the blood of the ancients right and then that just becomes the surface on which you know the canvas on which I'm playing at this rectangular surface is almost like you know taking a plot of desert land and making something out of nothing with this desert land and washing pigments one over another over another over another to see what starts to form so it long way of saying it's just an exploration like the journey I'm traveling on so, so, it the becomes, artwork. so again for both of us it's a 
creative journey, it's a spiritual journey, it's a way of, when you're making art, it, it gives you an aliveness and it makes you look in a way that if you're not in process, mm. that you, you don't see, you don't have that involvement. It, it's, mm -hmm. a, it's, it's a, it, 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 it's, it's a, almost a uh, portal into, into a, a magic world. Mm. You know, your, your blank canvas is a way of you to take what you're seeing and, you know, run it through your filter, your, right. your, your aesthetic. Right. I mean, you know, when you've stood on the edge of a cliff or the rocks at sunset or sunrise and you're watching all of the colors of the earth change and you're looking deep into that horizon and you're, you know, participating in those moments of change. And you're, you're observing something that's so hard to capture, whether it's photographically without extra filters and play, but just to really be in that moment and to capture the feeling of being in these lucid twilight moments, looking deep into the horizon, just the vastness of that space and the changing planes of color and textures and that sensation and what does that that's outside of you, but it's, it's being filtered inside of you. You know, your feeling body and mind can't even really comprehend the space, the time that it's taken to create that, or the fact that even as the earth turns and the sun is moving, everything is constantly changing. It does not look the same from one moment to the next. And so, so, yeah. So, again, in the, it's like the, being the, there. the frustration of, in other words, you're, again, all your paintings, you're, you're running through many, many layers, many levels. There is no, especially in the world of abstraction, there's no right or wrong other than you're right and you're wrong, your stop and your go, your understanding of it. Uh, mm. And you know when it's right, you know when it's wrong, you know when, when you're on, the, on your path, you know when you're off your path. Uh, well, and I've always compared it to, you know, not wanting to participate in a formula necessarily. Like, I'm not just trying to get an end result. Though, you know, it'd be true to say that when you're embroiled in a huge painting, that, yeah, you would like to find a resolve. You want, but to, get it, a, you want to get a rightness. Well, yeah, you want to find, you know, you are lost in the journey. It's yes, nice to yes. find out where you're going and, and what it's going to look like. Yes. Though, when you get there, you recognize, actually, the richness has been the whole way along. Uh -huh. So you want to extend this process of painting and the journey sometimes, even if it takes you through certain trials and tribulations and the work, maybe even, you know, you get to the edge and you're like, whoa, I'm, you know, this is really dangerous right here. You have to pull back a bit, you know, and so, so you have I'm to find hoping, some fearlessness. I'm hoping, and, and again, this is one of the things mm. we don't know. So our, uh, your, your audience, your, the person who buys the painting on the wall, mm. um, it would be just as easy if you did this on the, one level and did it and you, you could just as well fake it and you don't sometimes right. there's that feeling and, oh. and and how do you i think it would make a difference and i think it would be it would make a difference in what somebody had on their wall over time i, I, I mean i think i think your i think integrity in art matters you know i just a painting i recently sold yeah it was a quite a large painting it's four foot by five foot and I created it when I first moved here four years ago. I created it in my garage under like floodlights during the winter rains before I'd found this studio, um, constantly compelled to make work regardless of yeah. whatever space I have available. Yes. And it was an extremely difficult period of my life um, in relationships with my father's like impending death um, in London. You know, my whole world was being wrenched and art has always been a tool for me to somehow express the inexpressible. Even since I was a teenager, when I found that gift to be able to express what was going on inside me without having to use words to put a voice to the confusion. So this painting turned into a very beautiful painting and I called it emotional currents and tectonic shifts, as though emotions could even shift a tectonic plate. You know, that's the effect of the capacity of human feeling 
is that we are, create somehow tidal waves and earthquakes and tornadoes in the world through our feeling and our experience. Well, that's what it feels like within us. Now, I recently shared this, the image of this piece, you know, with the, on social media, and I got such a barrage of, of good response. And it was interesting to me because, um, you know, maybe it's people happy that, you know, you express that another painting's gone to a collector and that you've sold it. Or maybe the piece actually really touches these people. A lot of people wrote to me directly and were like, wow, I really love that piece. Now, is it because of that emotional current and tectonic shift that I was going through? Now, yesterday, when I was thinking about that, it was actually an earthquake here. Yeah. It made the whole building go boom, right? And I've been thinking a lot about mental health and um, how there's so little care and so little, um, and it's still so stigmatized, but it's something that we are all so deeply affected by, right? So I generally and genuinely think that great art is loaded, that you can look at a piece and you know, wow, I share some of that, you know, beauty and trauma, because we all share that. And you know, with that, um, psychological and emotional breaks that I think people of experience and big heart and minds are, are quite prone to, the questioning people. Um, you know, that really concerns me. It really, you know, I'm a part of that. I don't think any of us get to escape that. Um, you know, in, in my family experience, it, we've dealt with a lot of that directly since I was a child. In um, my wife's family experience, I feel like special needs and um, understanding ourself and our place, you know, so what I, what I came to with that was, well, people are in responding to this work so um, impactfully because, you know, they're aware that they're, you know, of the healing power of art somehow, that art can express something that is otherwise inexpressible. And that painting created in a dark, hole of a garage with floodlights in the rain. And I, I'm sure you they know? could not, um, you know, an audience can't articulate what they're picking up. They pick up, right? Uh, you know, I, I think that good art is good art and, and not good art is not good art. And I, and I, and I think intention matters. Mm. I think intensity matters. I think the, uh, mm. the, the experience of the artist, I think, is paramount. Because if you haven't got experience or something to say, then why are you making art? I mean, okay, it can be a therapy. There's a lot of sides to art. But for me, as we were coming back to this conversation, if we're talking about the healing power of art, we're talking about what affects people collectively, what we all share, what we really can't talk about, then that is a bigger conversation. Sure, you've got, you know, Mickey Mouse sculptures, plopped art down in certain cities and all around, and that's another aspect of art. Big shiny chrome Mickey Mouses by some of the world's most famous artists. It's a very different part of the story of art than I'm involved in. Let's, um, let's, let's stop there. Yeah. Uh, okay, you're watching Conversations and Collaborations. I'm with Paul Seftel, and we'll be right back. <laughs>